All right, section 4.2, integer representations, which basically just boils down to um, converting decimal into binary, octal, and hexadecimal, and vice versa. So everything we're doing is based on um, this theorem, which says uh, take any integer you want, um, call it b, as long as it's greater than 1, and then take another positive integer. So what happens is we're able to express B, uh, excuse me, express N uniquely, uniquely as A times K times B to the K plus A times K minus 1 um, times B to the K minus 1 and so on and so forth down to A1 times B plus A0. Now, notice that um, we really are just writing everything as powers of B. Um, this B b by itself is the same thing as b to the first power. And I don't have a b written here, but I can write that as b to the zero power. Um, actually, let me rewrite that so it's a little bit uh, where it's supposed to be. So b to the zero power. So everything is in powers of b, and they keep getting smaller and smaller. b to the k, k minus 1 down to 1, down to 0. So everything is in um, terms of B. Now B in this case is called the, the base that we're working in. So if we're in um, numbers the way we usually think of them, we're in base 10 or decimal. If we're in uh, binary, we're in base 2. If we're in octal, we're in base 8. If we're in hexadecimal, we're in base 16. Um, now you can do this for any base you want, but decimal, binary, octal, and hexadecimal are the only ones that we're going to be looking at um, in in class this semester. Now these these a's a to the a sub k a sub k minus one down to a sub one a sub zero those are what are called your digits, okay? And each of these are non-negative integers that are smaller than b, and the first one has to not be zero. So for example. Um, if we were to take the number 27,214, um, this can be written as 2 times 10 because um, it's, it's a decimal number. And so we need to see what power we're going to put on 10. Well, here is the zeroth power, the ones place. Here's 10 to the first place, the 10s, 10 squared, the 100s, 10 cubed, the 1,000s, and 10 to the fourth, the 10,000s. Um, so this is going to be a 2 times 10 to the fourth power plus a 7 times 10 to the third power plus 2 times 10 to the second power plus 1 times 10 to the first power, plus 4 times 10 to the 0 power. Now, uh, that looks really bad, so let me fix uh, those last few ones that I've written down over there. So let's see, uh, 2 times 10 to the fourth, plus 7 times 10 to the third, plus 2 times 10 squared, plus 1 times 10 to the first, plus 4 times 10 to the 0. Now, you don't have to write um, 10 to the first power. You could just write 10. You don't have to write 10 to the 0 power. You can just leave it alone. But I recommend that you do, because that'll make it a little bit easier to see um, what your highest power should be when you're doing this, especially in bases other than, than base 10. So again, um, this is decimal or base 10. And what are the digits when you're in base 10? So the digits when you're in base 10, it's going to be all the numbers that are less than B, which is 10 in this case. So all of the non-negative integers that are less than B. So the digits are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So in different bases, you'll have different digits. Um, and we'll, we'll see how that works uh, right now.
So the first example we're going to do is binary. If we choose 2 as a base, that gives us binary expansions of integers. In binary notation, each digit is either a 0 or a 1 because those are all the non-negative integers that are less than 2. So everything is a 0 or a 1. Um, in other words, binary expansion of an integer is just a bit string. Um, so let's see how we can write this binary um, number as a, as a decimal. So we have this binary, and we're going to write it as a decimal. Well, we do that by writing out the binary expansion. So here's how that works. We have... 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, base 2. And I want to expand that out. So this is going to be equal to 1 times 2. So what power? Well, here is the 0 power, the first power, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. So this is... 1 times 2 to the 8th power plus 0 times 2 to the 7th power. That comes from this 0 plus 1 times 2 to the 6th power plus 0 times 2 to the 5th power plus 1 times 2 to the 4th plus 1 times 2 cubed plus 1 times 2 squared, plus 1 times 2 to the first, plus 1 times 2 to the zeroth. And then we just have to do all this arithmetic. So, you know, do this out by hand, get out your calculator or whatever. But when you do all the arithmetic, when you take all these powers of 2 and then do the multiplication, this is going to turn out to be the number... 351. So this binary number, 10101111, base 2, is equal to 351. Now, if we want to emphasize that this, is, this, this last one is a decimal number, sometimes we'll write this as 351 base 10. Uh, but but these, these mean the same thing. These mean the same thing. If I don't write parentheses and then a base, assume that I'm talking about base 10. That is, assume that I'm talking about a decimal number. Okay, moving on. Um, octal and hexadecimal expansions. Uh, the most important cases in computer science are base 2, uh, other than decimal, are base 2, base 8, and base 16. Base 8 expansions are called octal expansions and base 16 expansions are called hexadecimal expansions. Um, so let's do um, some examples of those. Uh, that right there should be an 8. I want to convert um, 7016 base 8 to decimal. Now, this is going to be um, 7016 base 8 is going to be equal to 7 times 8, because 8 is the base we're working in. And so what, what exponent does that have? Here's the 0 place, the 1's place, the 2's place, the 3's place. So this is going to be to the 3rd power, plus 0, because that's my next number, times 8 squared, plus 1 times 8 to the 1st, plus 6 times 8 to the zeroth. And again, you'll get out your calculator and evaluate this. And you'll see that it's 3598. 3598. Again, that's 3598 uh, base 10. And now let's do an example with hexadecimal, and it's going to work the exact same way. The only thing that's different is. Um, what are the, the, think about what the digits are going to be for hexadecimal. That's where these letters are, are going to come from. Remember your digits are going to be numbers that are positive integers that are smaller than your base. Um, so for, for, for decimal, our digits were 0 through 9. 
for binary are digits where 0 and 1. For octal, um, I didn't mention this on the previous slide, but um, on the previous example rather, but for octal the digits are 0 through 7. So for hexadecimal, our digits are going to be 0 through 15. Um, so we need a way to represent uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 as digits in hexadecimal. So uh, the hexadecimal... digits are 0 through 9 and then we have A, B, C, D, and E. Now what these correspond to are A corresponds to 10, B corresponds to 11, C corresponds to 12, D corresponds to 13, E corresponds to 14, and I left one out. We also have F, which corresponds to 15. Okay. The reason we, we can't just write one zero um, for, for A, for this hexadecimal digit, is because it would be a one and a zero. It would be the one digit and a zero digit, um, which which are, are different things. So we need a way to represent these digits in hexadecimal form other than just writing them in this decimal form. And so this is what we do. But when you're making the expansion, when you're converting from hexadecimal to decimal, when you're converting from base 16 to base 10, um, you know, like right here in the... Um, Zero, one, two, th in the powers of in the third powers place, you'll use a ten to the th um, you use use a a ten times eight to the third power. So here's how this works. I feel like I'm making this more complicated than it actually is. So here's how you actually do the calculation. So we have the hexadecimal number two a e zero b base sixteen is going to be equal to two times 16 to the, let's see, to what power? Uh, zeroth power, first power, second power, third power, fourth power. So 16 to the fourth power plus A. Remember, A is 10. So this is going to be 10 times 16 to the third power plus E, but E is 14 times 16 squared plus 0 times 16 to the first, plus b, b is an 11, times 16 to the 0 power. And again, you, you just have to do the multiplication. Get your calculator out and do the multiplication and the addition. And this will be equal to the decimal number, 175,600. 627, which again, because I want to keep emphasizing it, 175, comma, 627, base 10. And that's all there is, um, converting binary, octal, and hexadecimal to decimal form. Um, you just have to, you know, just expand it out like that. So you take your first digit, and then you multiply it by your base raised to the appropriate power, and you just um, punch it into your calculator, and then you get the answer. Uh, now, going the other way, is it, it's not any more difficult, um, but there are more steps. So let's, let's see how that works. So this algorithm here, um, labeled base conversion, tells us what to do step by step to convert something um, from base 10 into either, um, well, into any base you want, but in particular into binary, octal, and hexadecimal. So here's what we do. Um, you divide n by b to get a quotient and a remainder. Remember the division algorithm. So I'm going to get something like this. Um, n is the number I'm starting with. And B is going to be my base. So I write N as B 
times Q0 plus A0, where Q is the quotient, A0 is my first remainder. Since A0 is a remainder, it's going to be greater than or equal to 0 and strictly less than B. In other words, it's going to be a digit in this base. So then um, we do another division, but now I divide B into this previous quotient. So I'm able to write Q0 as B times Q1, another quotient, plus A1, another remainder. And this remainder has to be less than B, greater than or equal to 0, so this is another digit. Um, and then you just do this over and over and over and over. And the, this, this stops eventually. Um, this process terminates when we get a quotient equal to 0. And it produces the base B digits of N from right to left. So I highlighted that, and I'm going to understand the important, I'm going to underline or circle the important parts. You stop when you obtain a quotient equal to zero, and you read the digits from right to left. Okay, That is, um, these remainders are going to be the digits in your new base, and you read them from right to left. So let's do an example. So we are going to convert the decimal number, we know it's decimal because there's a 10 right there, we're going to convert the decimal number 12,345 base 10 into base 8. So the first thing we do is we divide 8 into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to do this first one. Um, this first division, actually I think I might do all of these, uh, do it in detail so you can see how, how it works. So just kind of bear with me, and you can fast forward the video if you don't want to watch all of the long divisions, but, but I want to show you each and every step for just this one example. So 8 will go into 12 one time, there's an 8, subtract and get 4, bring down the 3, 8 goes into 43, what, 5 times? So that's 40, bring down the 3, or subtract to get 3, bring down the 4. 8 goes into 34 4 times. So that's a 32, subtract, bring down the 5. 8 goes into 25 3 times. So 24, whoops, 24 and the, and the difference is 1. So there, there's my remainder. So what have we got? Uh, we got that we can write 1, two, three, four, five as one, five, four, three times eight plus one. So we have that remainder right there. Okay, now we do another division. We do another division. <coughs> we do eight into that previous quotient. So eight into that quotient. 1543. 8 goes into 15 one time. And when I subtract, I will get um, 7. Bring down the 4. 8 goes into 74 uh, nine times. Multiply and get 72. Subtract, bring down the 3. 8 goes into 23 two times. So it's 16 and a 7 is my remainder. So now I write 1543 is equal to, my new quotient is 192 times my divisor plus my remainder now, this, the remainder this time was 7. Uh, and then we, we, we keep going with this. Now I'm going to divide 8 into one. 92. 8 goes into 19 two times. It's so 32. 8 goes into 32 uh, four times. 32 with the remainder of 0. Now, at this point, people get a little confused because they're thinking, oh, I stop when I get a 0. But you don't stop when you get a 0 remainder. You stop when you get a 0 quotient. So we actually don't stop yet. 
we're going to write 192 is equal to um, 24 times 8 plus 0. So we keep going with this. And we divide 8 into 24. 8 goes into 24 3 times with a remainder of 0. So 24 is equal to uh, 3 times 8 plus 0. And now we have one more division. Um, I have to divide 8 into 3. 8 goes into 3 0 times. There's a zero quotient. It means this is our last step. Zero times eight is zero with a remainder of three. So we get that three is equal to zero times eight plus three. Uh, and again, we found that zero quotient right there, which means that's our last step. And the digits right here are going to give us, um, th sorry, those remainders are going to give us the digits for, um, for our octal representation. So now to, to find out what the expansion is. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Base 10 is equal to, remember I said you have to read it from right to left, or since I wrote them um, vertically, I read them from bottom to top. So this is going to be bottom to top. You always read it bottom to top. So the first digit is a 3, and then a 0, and a 0, a 7, and a 1, base 8. So 12,345 base 10 is equal to 30071 base 8. So again, this isn't anything that's really hard or, or you know, weird. It's just doing repeated long division. You just have to keep track using the division algorithm. Keep track of all of your remainders and your quotients every time. And then at the end, once you get a zero quotient, you read from the bottom up and get your um, get your digits for your octal representation. So uh, now let's look at another example in a different base. So now I'm starting out with this decimal number, um, 177,130 base 10, and I want to convert it to hexadecimal. So again, you would start out by doing the division, 16 into 1, Seven seven one three zero. Sixteen goes into seventeen once. Goes into seventeen once. Goes into eleven zero times. Um, goes into one hundred and thirteen. Um. Uh, what, seven times, I think? Seven times six is two, carry the four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, yeah. So then it'll go into ten, zero times, with a remainder of ten. Now, I'm not going to do all the long divisions this time, um, but you'll have to, to carry them out every time to get your quotients and your remainders. Um, so what we're going to get is this. If you do all the long divisions over and over and over, you'll get that one seven seven one three zero is equal to one one zero seven zero times sixteen plus that remainder down there. The remainder was ten. Then if you divide sixteen into your new quotient, you'll get that one one zero seven zero is equal to uh, 691 times 16 plus 14. Uh, if you do the division again, 16 into 691 will give you that 691 is equal to 43 times 16 plus 3. 
and then 43 will be equal to 2 times 16 plus 11. And then 2 is equal to 0 times 16 plus 2. And you know that you're done because you have a 0 quotient right there. All right, now to get the... Uh, to get the, the hexadecimal expansion, again, we look at these remainders. Reading from the bottom up, we'll get that 177130 base 10 is equal to, bottom up, a 2, or right, 11. Remember how your digits work in hexadecimal. 11 is going to be B. 3, 14. 14 is the digit E. A 10. 10 is the digit A. And we're done. So base 16. So there's the answer. Um, 177130 base 10 is equal to 2B, 3EA, base 16. Then we have one more example with binary. All right, so convert the number 241 base 10 into binary. Now, binary ones are easy because you're just dividing 2 into numbers, but there can be lots of divisions involved because you're just dividing 2 into numbers. So starting out, um, we'll do 2 into 241. Uh, it goes into 2 one time. goes into 4 two times goes into one zero times, and then there's a remainder of one. Um, I'm not going to go through all the steps. Uh, I'll, I'll do the first couple steps. Uh, so the first one will give us that 241 is equal to 120 times 2 plus 1. So if I wanted to do this with long division again... Um, If I wanted to do this with long division again, I could do 2 into 120. Um, it goes 60 times with no remainder. So 120 is equal to 60 times 2 plus 0. Again, I don't stop. Um, I only stop when I get a 0 quotient, not a 0 remainder. Um, but you don't have to do this. You can do division by 2 in your head. Uh, 60 is equal to 30 times 2 with no remainder. 30 is equal to 15 times 2 with no remainder. 15 is equal to 7 times 2 with one remainder. 7 is equal to um, 3 times 2 with one remainder. Three is equal to uh, one times two with one remainder. And one is equal to zero times two with one remainder. Got a zero quotient, that means I'm done. So the final answer would be 241 base 10 is equal to, so reading the remainders from the bottom up would be one 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 zero 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 one base two, um, and that's all there is to it. When you are converting from um, octal, binary, hexadecimal into decimal, you just expand it out with powers. If you are converting from decimal to one of the others, then you do the long division thing. Um, yeah, so that's all it is. Uh, so about the same time this video goes up, there'll be another video with some, um, some more stuff with um, working with different bases, in particular how to add numbers in base 2 without going out of base 2, and also how to convert directly from base 2 to base 8 to base 16, um, and, and, and so on and so forth like that. So that's all for this one.